today I got this new amplifier from Serwin Vega, which is the model V1100.5. It's a five channel mobile amplifier. It's exciting to see. First off, some positive things I have to say about the amplifier. The size, very nice, very small, compact. Love that. Seven and a half inches by 12 and a half inches, just under two inches in height. Nice, small, compact amplifier. Lots of topology, lots of adjustability, very flexible amplifier. Some things that I don't like about it, over here on the top side, I already took the liberty of removing these two screws to access this panel. By the way, they do include the tool to do so. All the controls are located underneath this panel. Eh, could be better. I would have liked to see a, a flip door. would have been a lot more accessible, so if you have to tune something or adjust or make a change or something like that, to go through all that work to access this panel is a little bit of a drag. But aside from that, it's a clean amplifier. Another note that I like to make about this amplifier, and maybe someone else can share with me what they think or if they've had any experience about this, but I just oddly enough did a review on an MB Quart amplifier today. It was a reference series with a 320.2. Same exact screws, Allen type, same locations. The chassis looked almost identical. All the, all the stuff that you see here, um, down to the actual block that the amplifier is physically made out of looks exactly like the one that Maxonics makes, which owns MB Quartz. So I'm wondering if they're using the same factory or if they're, you know, swapping spit with parts and one's making for the other. I don't know. But um, I guess that's just a mystery. I don't know. But I noticed it, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here to share my, my, my knowledge, what I see that's going on in the world. So if that means anything to you, hey, take it for what it's worth. Moving ahead, it does come with a wired gain control knob, which... They give you a little piece of Velcro so you could just kind of do the, you know, stick it on or put it into this little housing where they give you the parts so you can flush mount it, take it apart, dehouse it, and make a, a flush mount, which is probably what I would do myself personally. You got about a 15 foot extension cable so you can run that, plug it right into the amplifier's jack so you can get a sub, sub control up in the front. This would be very uh, handy, especially if you were using this in conjunction with another part which I have which oddly enough is made by Serwin Vega. This piece right here, which is an IOEM 6, which is basically an OEM processor. So if you have a stock stereo, like something like say a new Camaro or Corvette, something where you don't want to modify or remove, you could take this, take the stock audio outputs from there, run it onto the input leg of here, and create your, your, your front, rear, and subwoofer for outputs, which again, you can see made up to this unit, front, rear, sub, dedicated, so you could have a complete factory OEM solution utilizing that and you can go either with an aftermarket low, low signal RCA preamp input as usual or use something like that IOEM 6 and do a full OEM integration type of system which is probably what I would like to see myself do. Over here you got your sub channel and you have your sub and you have your channels 1 and 2. So your sub channels up on top right below you have channels 1 and 2. So starting with the sub you got low pass filter, which is 30 hertz up to 300 hertz, so you can cut it off at 300 hertz and down for your sub. You got a 0, 180 phase boost from 0 to 18 dB. You got a clipping uh, LED, which is a nice diagnostic feature, which I'd like to see. More people should make this, by the way, people. So if you make amplifiers, pay attention to that. Subsonic, 10 to 35, I'm sorry, 10 to 55 hertz, my eyes are going. And your sensitivity, 5 volts to 0 0.2. So plenty of adjustability. You cannot ask for more than that. Now, for your full range of high pass, high pass or flat, you got your setting from 40 to 400 hertz. Output clipping LED for diagnostics. You got, again, sensitivity mirrors this one. So does the other set. So does the other crossover. And so does a high pass filter. Everything you need is here. The only thing you're missing is possibly a bandpass filter. Would be nice to see something like that. But then again, if you're using an IOEM 6 or if you're using um, an external processor, EQ, what have you, you could, you could achieve that, or just using crossovers and component speakers that are on the output stages of your speaker outputs. Speaking of speaker outputs, they hit me these blocks, which I myself um, had to fight with a little bit, and one of these stickers actually came off and it confused me, because I was going to take it and push it in there, and then I noticed, huh, that doesn't look right, because this is negative positive, and here it says positive negative, so I'm thinking, oh, so it goes like this. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but... I thought that was a little weird. And this, you would think, goes in that away, right? Because this is the top and that's the top, right? Nope. It goes like this. 
which I don't know to me is a little strange but I'm a little strange sometimes myself subwoofer preamp output the base knob we already, we already talked about the chassis like I said is very nice and small this thing is totally loaded with FET outputs it's got tons of power the the good thing about Serwin Vega and I like Serwin Vega and I'll tell you one of the reasons why I don't I like it more than I would like it had it not have had this fact but Serwin Vega was bought out by Diamond Audio just a few years back Diamond Audio is my brainchild of my own car audio system everything that's in my car that I love is of Diamond Audio so Serwin Vega to see them being a sister company to Diamond I'm, I'm liking that so some specs on this amplifier real quick before I go um, let's talk about it now this one here is on the box it says 1100 watts max power unfortunately hey this is not a Diamond D7 people um, let's keep it real at four rooms which is most likely what your front and rear speakers are going to be at you can expect 80 watts per channel on the sub you could expect 350 by one unless you're running a two ohm sub which again is very realistic if you have a dual four or something like that you can expect 500 watts on the sub output stage so that's not bad that's a lot of power for an amps like this that's a lot of power so that's pretty damn good all four range class d full power width modulation um it's it's terrific it's got all the diagnostics built into it everything on one side so it's not like connections on here over there a couple in the back and any of that kind of weird stuff it's very simple for the, for the guy who just wants to get it in under the seat, under the driver's panel or something like that, even in the center console, this amp will thrive anywhere you put it because it's just so small. And that's good because a lot of cars are just so tight these days. So, if you are looking for a decent little five-channel amplifier, give it a look. It's a brand new Serwin Vega stuff. All this stuff's on their site. Um, I was just there. Besides those women that they have on the home page, if you could actually get past that, there's a lot more information on this particular product. So there you have it. That's the Serwin Vega V1100.5.